common question that vegans get is, where do you get your protein from? This may come as a surprise, but there are actually so many sources of plant-based protein. So many, in fact, that I can't talk about them all in just one video. So stay tuned for further parts to this series. And if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe so you'll know when the next part of this video is released. And before we talk about the actual sources of protein, I wanna mention two things. One, I have a series on my blog called My Vegan Pantry Essentials. And in there I talk about the foods that I'm going to mention today in a little more detail. So if you want some more information, head over there and I'll put the link to that below. And two, the amount of protein you need each day. That amount will vary based on your age, your gender, your physical fitness goals, your activity level, and other factors. There's a misconception that we need a ton of protein in order to be healthy, but the recommended dietary allowance for protein each day is actually quite low. It's 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So for me personally, that's less than 45 grams of protein, so it's actually really easy to meet on a plant-based diet. So calculate your protein needs to see what you should be eating. The first food on my vegan protein list is lentils. Lentils are a superfood and for good reason. These little itty bitty guys are packed with protein as well as fiber, iron, folate, magnesium, and antioxidants. In one cup of lentils, you'll get 18 grams of protein. So if I were to have a half a cup of lentils with lunch, for instance, in a salad, and a half a cup of lentils with dinner, maybe in a pasta, I would get over 40% of my protein needs just from lentils. And today we have four varieties of lentils, red lentils, French green lentils, black beluga lentils, and brown lentils. Red lentils, as you may have guessed it, are red, but they actually turn yellow when they're cooked. And when you cook them, they get soft and mushy, so they're perfect in creamy dishes like Indian dolls and curries. French green lentils tend to hold their shape a little more, so they're great in salads or green bowls or in soups. Black beluga lentils are a little bit of a delicacy in my opinion. They're a little more expensive and they stand out on their own, so they're great in side dishes. And my personal favorite way to cook them is with some caramelized onions and mushrooms. Finally, we have some cooked brown lentils. These are pre-cooked, pre-packaged lentils from Trader Joe's. And I add these to Buddha bowls, salads, pita pockets, whatever, and it's a quick, easy way to get protein. And if you look at the back uh, label of the package, you see the great nutrition in here. It's got 120 calories per half cup, 9 grams of protein, and 8 grams of fibers. The next food on my vegan protein list is beans. And before we talk about their nutrition and protein content, let's address the elephant in the room. Farting. But I have some advice on how to minimize those fart attacks. So when you cook dried beans, soak them overnight, and then cook them in fresh cooking water. Get rid of that soaking liquid. The reason you should discard the soaking liquid is because it absorbs the oligosaccharides found in beans. And oligosaccharides are a type of carbohydrate. They're actually good for you, but when your body digests them, they form a byproduct, which is carbon dioxide, and that's what causes the farts. So to prevent those farts, simply cook your beans in fresh water after soaking them overnight. And when you're cooking beans, you can cook them in plain, regular water, but you should feel free to get creative. Add some flavorings like peppercorns, garlic, ginger, onions, carrots, celery, rosemary, anything that you might add to a stock. It'll make them a little more flavorful. I know I just told you how to cook dried beans, but if I'm being honest, most of the time I rely on canned beans because they're a time saver. They're definitely a little more expensive than dried beans, but they're not that expensive compared to most food products. And all you do is drain them and rinse them and get that canning liquid off and then they're just as healthy as dried cooked beans. And today we have canned black beans, canned chickpeas, canned cannellini beans, dried kidney beans, dried pinto beans, and dried white navy beans. Some of my favorite ways to eat beans, one is a quick and easy bean salad for a light lunch or dinner. I simply mix canned beans that I've rinsed and drained then I add in some vegetables, whatever I have on hand. Maybe it's chopped carrots or canned artichoke hearts. I also add in some nuts and seeds for healthy fats. And then I add some extra virgin olive oil, lemon juice, or maybe a balsamic vinaigrette, and some basil or parsley for fresh herbs. I also love beans and tacos and burritos, obviously, but I don't really like canned refried beans. So I make my own refried beans at home using canned whole beans. And I have directions for that in my Vegan Pantry Essentials post, which is linked below. And my absolute favorite way to eat beans is roasted. Again, sounds weird, but have you ever tried crunchy roasted chickpeas? They're amazing. They make the perfect snack to keep in your office drawer, your backpack, your gym bag, your pocket? Uh, do people put food in their pockets? Probably. Probably not, right? That's weird. 
All you need is some canned chickpeas that you rinse and drain thoroughly, and then you mix it with some olive oil and some sea salt and pepper, uh, whatever seasonings you want, maybe cumin and paprika or onion powder for something savory. Uh, then you mix it all together, put it on a parchment paper lined baking tray, and bake in the oven for about 20 to 30 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. The next item on my vegan protein list are minimally processed organic soy products. Most soy grown in the United States, in fact over 90%, is genetically modified. And what that means is that a plant has their DNA altered in a lab using the DNA from another food such as another plant, a bacteria, or a virus. And while the science on the exact effects of GMOs on our health is not clear yet, it's probably safe to avoid them when you can. That's why I buy organic soy products only. In the United States, if a label carries the organic sign, that means it's prohibited from having genetically modified organisms in the food. So you're pretty safe if you buy organic soy products. But if you want to be even more sure that you're not eating GMO food, look for the non-GMO verification label on products. And when I say minimally processed soy products, this does not refer to soy protein isolate or soybean oil or other highly processed baked meats. I'm talking about whole fermented soy products or whole soybeans or minimally processed soy products such as tofu. Now let's talk about edamame. Edamame is simply whole soybeans, also known as the food you get before your main course at a Japanese restaurant. Typically, I buy frozen organic shelled edamame and let it defrost in the fridge. Then I add it to whatever I want, whether it's a salad, with hummus, or in pasta. And honestly, my favorite way to eat it is plain with some flavored sea salt. Sounds weird, but it's so delicious. Edamame has more protein than any other bean out there. It's got 16 grams in just one cup. Now let's talk about tofu. Most of you have probably heard about tofu. It is somewhat processed, but still minimally processed. And I always buy organic tofu, again, to avoid GMOs and make the healthiest decision I can. There are different varieties of tofu that vary in texture. You have silk and soft tofu, which is great for blended foods because it's really creamy and soft. So I use it in vegan desserts, salad dressings, and sauces. The next variety is firm tofu, which, as you guessed it, is firmer in texture. It's great in pan-fried tofu as a tofu scramble or in a vegan cheese. I have a recipe for a vegan tofu ricotta that I use in lasagna and pasta, and I'll link to that below. Then we have extra firm tofu, which has the firmest texture and the least amount of water. It holds its shape really well, so it's great to put in the grill, to bake it in the oven, or to fry it. And in most of these types of tofu, you'll get 10 grams of protein in a half cup serving. And I know tofu sometimes gets a bad rep, but you really just need to know how to cook it right. My favorite way is to make crispy baked tofu. And I love it because it has a crunchy exterior and it's still soft in the inside, and it doesn't need a ton of oil as you do with fried tofu. And the last soy product I wanna to talk to you about is tempeh. Tempeh is whole fermented soybeans, and they come in blocks like this. It has a chewy texture and a slightly earthy taste. And the nutrition in tempeh is amazing. Because it's a fermented food, it's easier on your digestive system and overall healthier than other soy products. And one half cup of tempeh has 15 to 16 grams of protein, so it's an amazing addition to your diet. Technically, when you buy tempeh, it's ready to eat, but I recommend you steam it for about 10 minutes before you further cooking it. That gets rid of some of the characteristic bitterness in tempeh. And you can use tempeh in all kinds of dishes, including as a meat replacement. I like to marinate it, hit it on the grill, and put it in a sandwich or a burger. I also cube it and put it in stir fries, as well as crumble it up, mix it with some taco seasoning, and use it in tacos. So I hope this video has helped you see how many vegan sources of protein there are. I've just talked about a few today, and I'll talk about more in the next part. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button, and don't forget to subscribe. Talk to you guys later, bye.